Hey guys, another rubber toe assembly here. Full assembly of the 8 by 7.5 storage shed. Alright, here is your owner's manual, assembly instructions. You want to go ahead and give them a quick look before you begin here. Getting right to it, the flooring, they lock together just as you see here. Already got one piece down on the one end, and this one gets one middle piece, and then the other end goes right together just like puzzles. <clears throat> you bend that into position, lock the three pieces in together, interlock the flooring, and then come through with the screws that they give you. And it gets two screws in each area, one in the middle and one on the side row of two. You put one screw here, as you see, on one piece and the other screw, caddy corner. On the little uh, inserts that show you where the screws go easy enough getting right to it the gable this looks like the front gable where the door is going to be just clearing the holes as you see there there's five holes all the way around that circle area with a little screwdriver popping it through there just opening those holes because when you put the vent on you're going to want to see through there make sure the screen and the vent is all lined up perfect so, as you see there, one piece overlaps the other right in the middle there, kind of clips together. Make sure it's nice and flush edges, as you see there. And here are your two vents coming to bag. You get one screen for each vent, and it has three holes at the top that line up with the vent. Three holes to the top and two holes to the bottom. Just as you see there, it's kind of lined up as I go. I'm opening up the bags of hardware real quick. A lot of small screws that get small washers on them. You can go ahead and pre-install those, five on each if you want. So they're ready to screw on when you got it lined up. And then there's uh, four of the short fat screws that are going to go right up the middle of this that's going to hold those two pieces together that you see there. So yep, going right to those four screws. First one screwed in, second one at the top. It's nice and straight. Just checking that. You can see the curve there, right by my knee. If you see, there's like a long curve at the bottom of that gable, because your doors are going to swing open right there. It's going to be your doorway. It's going to be the front gable, you can see. So, <clears throat> putting the washers onto those five little screws. And then I'm going to set the vent. There's the vent, as you see there. Jamming right through here. Set the vent just as you see there it lines right up in that hole with the three holes to the top and the two to the bottom and if you look through those holes that I cleared just where I'm pointing you can see that it lines up perfect with those holes and you put the screen on top just as you see there here's one of my great tricks you just hold it and light up the screen perfectly with all those holes put two fingers as you see there gently lift up the whole gable and then lift right back down just so enough to the screen clear and as you see it's holding it down the screen and those holes should line up with no screen in the way because it's lined up right where the holes are on the screen matches up perfect and then you go through with your small screws and the washers on them and go ahead and install all those it's a number two Phillips bit and those first four screws I put in was a number three uh, Phillips tip and so it's all complete and then because it's the door side you're going to want a bar across the front there that the door is going to lock into support bar and they get these two little plastic squares they just pop right in just as you see there and getting right to it uh, it has a little bit of a bend to it kind of like a pool cue I would say I was uh, compare it to and so I just go with whatever side is not a snugger fit and it lines right up with uh, a little cut out on to where it's going to go right underneath that bar is a little cut out spot and that's where the bar goes it's the same length and see how I put the finger there to the side you want that center hole to be just to the right just as I pointed out there and then with the number three Phillips tip switching back and forth to number three it has uh, four or six screws that you just saw me uh, put in that first one there go all the way across and that's what supports that that's what holds that on there <clears throat> So that was that cable done, and moving right along into the trusses, you see how they're all laid out there, nice. 
working there on the, f on the flooring of the 8x7 shed because it's a tight area back there in the backyard here. So a little tight corner so probably wasn't too much area to work with here but you can see I'm moving right along. Dumped out the screws, all the hardware for these trusses and the first thing I do is put on, there's only two of these middle bars, I put on the little nuts on the end of those. Sometimes they don't go. I might have to put grease on there to make the nut nuts go. And so just hand tighten for now. I get my first truss bar and line it up just as you see there with the center support. I'm just going to bring it all together and run two screws in there. Flip it over real quick with my finger on the other end holding them. And then just put two nuts on the other end of that. Boom, boom. It's on. Just hand tighten in for now. When you come back later and tighten those up just a turn or two you know don't want to crimp those channels so I flip it over to the other side move right along as you see and I'm putting two screws on the other side same direction make it look nice and pretty there's one and there's two dropping right through and they're gonna it's gonna flip over I'm gonna hold those two screws in with my finger just as you see there going vertical with it and then put two nuts on the other side of those screws as well just like the other side so you got a nice v-shaped top coming up <clears throat> then I lay it down and put your uh, support bar across the middle as you see there it's gonna be two holes to screw into and there and then on the opposite side as well and these two small screws have to go just as you see there from the inside pointing outward and then you run a nut right as you see there run a nut on the outside because you're going to need to put the roof pieces into that channel so you don't want anything sticking out obstructing it now the side jump right over as you see from the inside pointing out and then a little end nut on the end of that one as well then I grab one of those pre-made center bars run it right through the top all the way down to that square hole in the middle of the, of the support across and out the other side and it gets another one of those nuts little black cap nut screws into the bottom and just hand tightening for now four or five or six turns or so and there you have loosely built one truss and I'm grabbing these last two screws for the other side they should line up perfectly because that center bar and the other two on the other side are holding it right where the hole should line up so these last two should be really easy as you can see from the inside out run the cap nut on the end of that and this is the last one again pointing from the inside pointing out and you're all set now you come through and tighten these each one as you go along or you can run through loosely and then go through two or three or however many are in the shed and I have a 3 8 socket as you see there on one side and a screwdriver on the other just barely one little click one little click with the drill gun just just snug it up that's all you need because you don't want to crimp these things down so check your torque real good on your drill gun every time you use it and then I drop down the channel to this end just like you see same procedure snug these up as well you don't have to tighten too too much just you don't want them rattling no rattling washers no rattling nuts or bolts just snug them up zip zip real quick and then you're all set on this truss except for that center that center bar with the two nuts on each side move back to the center as you see I'm switching out from 3 8 to 7 16 on this one socket it's gonna go through the top click it into my little drill gun set the torque and then a 7 16 open end wrench just like that Put the open end wrench at the bottom and the socket at the top, and then zip. There you have it. So that's a nice tight, tightened roof truss, complete, ready to go. And just do them all the same way, just like that. However many you have, this one has, I think, a two, two of them. Anyway, onto the doors. Straight into doing the doors. This particular model has the square bar that goes all the way through uh, this channel at the end of the door it's like a long tube but it's square shaped 
Anyways, you line that up and make sure your holes, as you see right by my hand, right there, my hand's over it, and then boom, I'm shoving it down that long, um, that long tube there. Sometimes it's a little bit easier if you go vertical, just like you see me there. The door is lightweight still, and you just pull down and use the ground. It's cardboard. It's usually down somewhere there. There should be cardboard. Anyway, um, as you can see, the, the long square pole is all the way inserted where it has to go. And then I come down to put the handle on and the um, locking enclosure there. The handle looks like I'm gonna put that on first here. Um, consists of two screws at the top, one screw at the bottom with a washer. Just measuring it up, sizing it up for now. Lining up the holes. <clears throat> a lot of times I put the bottom screw in first, not all the way, just kind of loosely, and then come back and do the top, depending what if the top part gets a little. Um, handle or not, whether it's the right or the left, this looks like it's the right. The left if you're on the outside, but yeah, I must have put that bottom screw in already, okay, because that was in there. And everything's lined up, the three screws, two longer ones in the top with washers and the short one at the bottom. It's nice and tight, and then I go to the next step here, which is the handle. It looks like the bolt, the bolt style handle which is going to slide across from door to door and it's going to bolt the door shut. Since this will be the left side door, it's going to have uh, dead bolts on the top and on the bottom of it that are going to lock it in place. But before I screw those dead bolts on, I'm going to put the main lock, bolt lock enclosure on. This is the receiver side, so they get the two carriage bolts as you see there. And I believe they're painted on the top to match the carriage bolt or painted. Yep, and they go right through those holes. Run a screwdriver through those two holes and just wiggle it around in a circular motion. If there's any debris in there, you want to clean it, clean it out. This one looks pretty clean. And they pop through right on the other side. It gets a washer and a cap nut right there. And then one on the other side as well, one washer, one cap nut, and I just hand tighten them for now. You can see I'm holding the two carriage bolts with my hand on the other side. And I come through with a 7 16th uh, wrench and just give it a couple of turns around and around just to snug it up nice. Don't really want to bear down on these either. Just nice and snug so it's holding on there tight. Uh, you might have to adjust these later to line it all up shouldn't have to very very much though. If it's going through the holes it should be pretty close. Within an eighth or a quarter of an inch I would assume. It gets a little square cap in the bottom it, after that. I just pop that in, give it a couple of taps and then um, laying it down here to put the deadbolts on the bottom of the door and on the top of the door. Getting this over with now which is just uh, the little pin that's going to drop into the floor here at the bottom of the door. It comes with a little block, They're these two little black blocks, and they, they only go on one way. Once you figure out which way it drops into the little uh, cutout inside the plastic, it's kind of the same shape as the block. You'll feel it kind of drop into place, and that's the way it should go. Uh, that really helps out when I just take it over there and flip it around, it doesn't feel right, it must be upside down, you flip it another way, it doesn't feel right, and then it can only go like four different ways, eventually it'll drop right into place on the plastic. And then you just match up the metal part of it as well, the holes line up, and make sure the um, deadbolt is pointing downward position of course. So there you see the little grooves that it lines up in. That's the way it's going to go. Boom. It shows a little imprint up and then down, depending which side it's, you can see as well. But anyway, the holes all line up. I put the silver deadbolt, line it up with the holes that are on the little block spacer. 
put a self tapper that they give you with it right where the hole is and as you can see zip it makes the hole in that metal tube that we put in and through the plastic and goes through everything and stunts it all up all in one shot with the drill gun. Just make sure your hands are out of the way of course. And then you have it. The bottom one is on. And then this one's going to get a top one as well, a top deadbolt at the top of this door. That's going to lock it into the support bar that you saw me put on the gable uh, just before this moments ago. So onto the top deadbolt. It also has a block just like the bottom one did. And you can drop it into a little plastic section at the top of the door as well. You'll feel it fit right into the little grooves at the top of the door. So set that one up there. I should I could lay this down actually. But I don't want to um, lay it down in this particular situation. Limited space. So I just went vertical here and put the block on the door and held the deadbolt to the block. It drops it in that little groove and I have uh, one of those uh, self tapper screws right there ready to go. Goes right through the holes. Top one and then the bottom one as well. It's going to get a second self tapper through the bottom hole. Make sure your hands kind of out of the way there just to be safe. And as you can see, boom, pull it down, that little spring loaded thing, pull it down and lock it around there so it stays out of the way for now. And you have your top and bottom deadbolts drilled on. Here I'm going through, look at all this uh, goop, plastic goop is what I call it. It's actually burring. The side of this wall panel needed to be burred off, shaved off. That was quite a bit on that one. You've got to check each panel, make sure there's not a uh, a big buildup of plastic running down the side of the panel. It could be up to an eighth, quarter of an inch sometimes. I've seen some big chunks. And as you can see there, boom, nice, all the way down the side of the panel. This is a great shot of deburring. Great shot. You know, sometimes you have to deburr every single panel. Sometimes they're uh, okay. So, and you want to deburr those holes as well. Check all those holes going all the way down. And then check your top line of the, each panel. Also, make sure there's no plastic uh, get, that'll get in the way. So, starting with the corner panel, it just drops into the first two holes, as you saw there. And then I gave it a couple taps, slid over, and then pulled down on the top, and it snaps. Two snaps. Click, click. That means both pegs clipped right into the flooring right there. That's your first corner where it's going to start. And we're going to make our way all the way around panel to panel with each panel from from the first corner all the way around to the other side where the door is going to be. So our first panel is going to be a solid panel drops down into the four holes in the flooring give it a couple of kicks over to the left so it shifts over and overlaps that first corner panel as you see there putting the screws on to a magnetized uh, number three Phillips tip. That's what you want to use here. Hold the screw on there, being magnetized. And I go right down the spline. You can see a nice level edge at the top. And I'm holding the top as I put the screws in, just, you know, because you got to push them in. I don't want the panels to bend or fall over. So, and then all the other panels going in the same way. The next panel here as you see dropped into the holes and slid over and I put the screws. It was the window panel. so where we chose to put the window on this model. And then the next one is going to be a corner and it's going to go just as you see there just like the first corner. But it's going to be the rear corners. The rear corners are going to be a slight bit different from the two front corners because the two front corners are going to have your doors so the edges are going to be different so make sure these back two corners are the right ones it'll tell you in the book you know you have two back corners and two front corners so make sure you put the right corners where they go and this one as you can see no, no problems snapped into place nice right by the window I like it 
when it's by the window because you can put your hand here just as you see there there or there even better at the top and you can see how I'm lifting up from the inside of that window lifting up the panel and get a nice straight perfect line where they come together boom put your first screw that should hold it and you just go right down that spline with all the other screws on to the next panel great footage here great footage the next panel is going to match up with the corner same way I'm holding it with my hands up at the top nice straight line you can actually see the line the groove inside the top wall panel you've got a nice straight line all the way across like a closed line totally flush perfect that's all gonna make everything easier for all the way through this whole procedure because your gables will line up perfect and your roof panels will line up nice and perfect the more perfect everything is flush nice right where it's supposed to be the easier everything will be <clears throat> that's why each panel see how I'm running my hand down the side of the panel each panel if it has any burrs or anything holding up just scrape them off just like you see there real quick I felt something that didn't feel right on the edge gave it a nice quick run with the razor knife edge to edge put it right into the next panel wall to wall nice straight line across the top there as you see I just pointed to it and you just do much of the same. Yep, see that line? That's what you want. Great shot of exactly what you want. They give you a nice groove to line up to. And if you can't get those straight, then you might have to put a little wedge back there just underneath the flooring. They give you a few wedges. Stick the wedge in where, where you need the panel to go up, whichever the area is, right about there, and then you lift it up so that I have a nice straight line. And then once you get your screws in, you come back around, you can pull those wedges out and keep going. So, um, but you can see here, this is a tight situation. Uh, but you can see there, I made it to the other, the other corner on the other side. Make sure it's the right corner. They're labeled in the owner's manual. So I drop it into place, first two holes, give it a couple of kicks so it's nice and flush lines up. I swing the outside around, even though it's tight corner right there, you can see it was just enough room to fit a panel overhanging where I could get the panel in there um, and as you see here they won't always click down into place the first time so because it didn't click down in there you see I'm investigating this back corner here trying again make sure it's lined up it was lined up there's the second one and it doesn't seem to be going in so um, there's a third attempt right there just to snap it in and doesn't want to go so that means those two nibs at the bottom on the edge there I just pull the flooring out from the wall give myself a little bit of extra space because this one I'm gonna have to look at and most likely one of those little nibs at the bottom you can see the first two look good and they were in but when I swung the wall around I'm looking at it right now the second two okay one of them's got a little chingered here might be bent out of place or there's a buildup there it is of residue yep as you see me going through here now clearing out the clearing off the plastic buildup burring off the bottom of it so it should drop in there because what happens is this excess plastic buildup goes through the hole and it's not dropped all the way through the hole yet and it won't because that buildup of plastic that you see me shaving off it's probably already hitting the concrete below and that's as far as it'll go it's holding it up so you slice off all that extra so that it can drop through the hole far enough where it clicks into place just like you see there I'm cleaning it up this is great great deburring footage of how you gotta clean up corners to make them drop in so and sometimes they're bent those little nibs sometimes they're bent you have to take a pair of channel locks or pliers and just kind of squeeze them and bend them back into the position that all the other ones are so that they go straight into the holes and drop into place and they click so back again giving it another try after cleaning that panel up corner panel give it a couple of kicks over it lines up nice it looks good so far swinging the corner around lining up those two holes and then pull down the top boom boom we'll see here you gotta pull firmly and then there you have it click click thumbs up I saw the thumbs up that means it's good then you go over to the your, your top line there and you see I just pulled up on one panel pulled down on the other didn't need no wedges in this situation 
and just lined up perfectly once you get one screw and then the second one and the third one as well and then the fourth and fifth screw at the bottom and it just holds and everything stays where it's supposed to stay everything's lined up nice and perfect this is a great back wall onto the next few panels the same way and as you can see yeah as you can see the corner goes in just like the others have and that's going to be your other corner that's for the front door drops into play pull down that one in real nice real nice because everything else is lined up perfect so by the time you get to the end it should be nice nice top line there flush and you can see the edge of that last yeah there you go you can see the edge the left edge of that last corner panel is uh, going to be where your doors are going to fit see all those holes running down that side that one is going to be for that side and the other one on the other side is going to look the same with holes going all the way down it those are the two front ones which designate your uh, front door corners where the doors are going to be and then uh, first thing I want to do is add some stability here to that whole back wall by putting this shelf up it kind of helps hold everything where it's supposed to be adds to the integrity of everything being where it's supposed to be this particular storage shed nice I'm just taking a look at where these holes are on these back two rails lining them up so that when we put in these cantilever brackets they line up where they're supposed to be on your shelf and it's going to get two screws in the cantilever brackets underneath and then two screws on each side um, into the walls on the left side and the right side there I'm just pointing out where the pre-drill holes are you got a little bit of swing room also so just determining where I'm going to hang these rails the right side is always right right in the middle and the left side is always off sometimes it's been off to the left or to the right depending which models you have uh, so you just line it up and that's why they give you a little bit of swing room underneath for your bracket your cantilever bracket which is going to plug into these two rails they give you a couple of little uh, indentations underneath the shelf there see all those little holes on the bottom of the shelf to screw into if you're a little bit off you can swing your bracket and screw into one of the little holes there so four holes and four screws holds that bracket on on the right and then this left side bracket looks like it's lined up there with the shelf one to the left of center on that back wall there or, or you see there where it's supposed to go so Putting the four screws in on that, that'll hold the, your left bracket bar for your shelf on the back wall. There you go, and now I have the shelf installed and right onto the rear gable. It's going to plug onto the back wall just as you see there, just like a puzzle, fits right in. It must be lined up nice and perfect, just like you see, a nice flush backing. I want to take advantage of that and go ahead and put some screws in right away. As you see, um, that's what I'm doing. Got three in so far. There's number four, zip zip. While it's nice and perfect like that, boom. Get that thing screwed down. Then I jump over to the right side. As you see, I'm getting this side screwed in. And you can just jump around and just go through the whole back gable and fill all the screws up or fill all those holes up with screws. <clears throat> so the next part is to install your first truss coming off of that gable. Same shape. See how the truss is lined up with the gable? Nice same shape because your roof panel is going to fit right on top of those. If you drop the gable into those wedges as you saw it's holding itself up there and you can come back through and with your first roof panel make sure these are all deburred as well nice and the edges are nice and clear of any excess plastic debris or buildup if you will and the first thing I do is line up the little nib that's going to drop into the little area here on the there's a great shot of it on the truss see there how the nib lines up into that little indentation perfectly 
you get that nib in there and then you put a screw in the bottom a bottom screw there and the very next place you go to is right up here at the top and put one screw in to hold that down into the pre-drill where it's at and it should be lined up pretty good after that so as you can see that one lined up real good I went ahead and took advantage of the corner and put in the screws nice and perfect all the way down the line on that gable lines up nice all this deburring of all the pieces really helps when you get to this point because that roof panel right there is just sitting right where it's supposed to be and there's no plastic buildup of anything that's in its way this one looks just fabulous it lined up so perfect which is just going to help everything down the line and I just go through across and fill in all the holes with screws where they go clearly looks great that's your first roof panel <clears throat> so then I jump over to the other side as you see there checking the edges as I go along put the other side on in the same fashion the first thing I do is line up where it's going to drop into place and I'm looking as you can see there I'm looking up at that nib same location on this one only reverse opposite side in the same area you're going to line up that nib as you can see there's a great outside shot of what it should look like from the outside boom and then your corner wraps around just like that great outside shot it's a nice outside shot there uh, and onto these trusses here see how the bolts are pointing the same direction make it look nice and pretty all the all the screws and the wash and the nuts are all pointing in the same direction so the next truss uh, drops into the grooves as you see there and it's going to get two more roof pieces that are going to go on in the middle and then the front two roof pieces won't go on until the doors are installed off there to the bottom right hand side there of the screen is where the doors are going to go as you see I do the next roof piece just like the first two right in the middle you got two nibs one on each side same process <clears throat> so onto the doors here uh, they're assembled except for the uh, steel tube that goes through the back side of the door with the uh, tube where you can put the tube right there as you see and just go vertical with it and just bring it down sometimes they're pretty hard to get through there because there's plastic build up inside the long tunnel channel there and so this situation here I'm going to go sideways this is how it shows you in the book but it's very hard to do this without banging it so there it bangs through once you're out the other side you know you're good you can have two different ways if that still don't work you can just bring it down and use the ground to your advantage to push that pull through so then here you have the little uh, pieces that go into the bottom bushings one for each door small round uh, piece of plastic it's called a bushing and it has a hole you want to line that hole up like you just saw me there uh, straight forward or it could be a little bit off to the side as long as you have that pole hole with the indented side facing outward just as you see there great shot of it and then you line it up nice and straight and then tap on the top I brought the door down there just to make it easier um, but you tap the top of that pole a few taps with the hammer make sure it's all the way down in there so you can put this cotter pin right here as you see that's where the cotter pin goes and it goes right in that little groove right through the uh, hole that's made in the pole with the indented side facing towards you it's a lot easier to catch that cotter pin that's why they tell you that and then you come around to the other side great footage here and you just bend the cotter pin left and to the right and then it's inserted that's door number one is put on for now I come to the deadbolt lock it down into the bottom at least give it a little stability and I slide a ladder there to hold it a little bit of an angle pointing inward because your front gable is going to get put on top of those two doors and then off to the other door and much like the first one you run that pole through the channel down the side of the door this one looks uh, a little easier there but again put it on its side just to get it to
pop through the other side. Sometimes you see uh, plastic buildup coming out the other end when it comes out because it just scrapes it right out. And this one's ready to be installed. Much like the first one, you bring it over. Uh, make sure your bushing is down into that hole. They tell you to put the bushings in way earlier in this process, but you just have to take them out again to get the panels, uh, the walls, panels to lock in there. Anyway, sometimes you give the panel a little bit of bump off to the corner so this thing will fit in that little hole. Just as you see there, I got a little pry bar underneath. Lift up the front end if you have to. Careful you don't pinch your fingers there. And then lay it down once it's inserted with the little grooves, groove holes pointing straight forward and straight back. That's how I do them. And then you go to your door and you probably have to spin that rod that you just ran through there. Spin it so that the indented side is facing towards the front and it's lined up with those holes so you can shoot your cotter pin all the way through there nice and easy <coughs> here's another great shot see how that's lined up just like that and then right here you put the cotter pin in same way the other side boom nice and easy and come around the other side and then bend the sides of the cotter pin to the left and to the right you're all set cool and then bring the door down a little bit yep makes it easier and then I reach through and I lock that bolt if you have two people they can lock the bolt from the outside and then you put your front gable on which is assembled earlier just as you see here both poles there's a hole there you might have to clear some of the plastic out of the way of the hole so it slides on there sometimes these can be tough getting on but you just line it up with the hole in the gable and you bring both sides down at the same time usually it's a little easier <clears throat> and there you, there you have it it fits on top and the right side and the left side you can see the grooves there that are going to fit right into the wall panels on the side of the door there it goes, drops into place. Make sure your door is on the outside of that. And then you put three holes on each side. You fill them in with these little short screws. They should line up nice and perfectly. Jump to the other side like you see there. Sometimes you have to pull the corner in a little bit to make it line up. Looks like it lined up real nice. I'm holding the back side of it. Put the screws in, three on each side, and then your deadbolt right there in the middle of the doors, that clips into that bar, support bar across the front gable. Onto the next small step here, putting these two pieces of plastic that go right here in the doors to fill any kind of uh, light coming through the corners there. And it takes two screws, one there, one right next to it, real short, small size screws just like you see there one two and the other side door is going to get the same thing as well you just line it up nice and flush so where they cover the any light that might be shining through that top corner of the notch there see how it lines up nice and flush with the door nice straight line there comes in locks out the little light that shines through those things are installed make sure your door swings open and shut nice thumbs up alright doors are on then you can come back and uh, put the final two roof pieces on as you see there lined up the holes alongside the gable put one or two in just to hold it right where it's supposed to be and I come back on the left side there's a little nib on the left side the side where the truss is on that should be lined up nice and perfect drops into a little groove and then you just go through and fill up all the other holes should be lined up oh yeah as you see here and just go down the line and filling up these holes if if the bottom corner there you need to pull in on the gable a little bit to line it up with the hole the preset holes then you just pull in a little bit looks like that one lined up nice and perfect boom boom the corners screwed down the rest of the roof tile is all screwed down looks good 
and then this is your last roof piece on the opposite side goes on just like the one you just saw <clears throat> any kind of uh, adjusting here maybe from the outside if needed put wedges in there but looks like the nib is pretty close to being lined up maybe a couple taps with the mallet from the top of the roof at the top there's one screw kind of holding it where it goes from the top it looks like I put in so it doesn't just slide off something's holding it there and then gives me a few minutes to line up that screw do whatever's necessary there I put a little screw in just a turn or two to make it to act as a hook so I can pull down from the inside on these roof pieces but you don't want to put a screw all the way in there because you don't want a long screw to go th right through the plastic and pop out the top of the roof that's for sure so just a little access hole just to grip it and pull it down looks like the nib is lined up pretty good there then you go through just like you did the other side yep looks nice and then fill up the holes there's the nib on that side the middle roof tile and then the front roof tile oh the middle roof tile there and then I'm lining up that last front tile but that's what you want you want the nibs to be in their little grooves and you want your gable which is uh, looks like four holes going up that side of the gable you want those to line up too sometimes it, this can be tricky but as you see there I use a little pry bar to kind of lift it and bend it into the channel the groove where it has to go and then bring it down. If someone's on the other side, it's a lot helpful in this situation. They can just pull down from the outside where the corner is and it should line up and click right into the groove. And then if it needs to go slide up a little bit, like in this case you see me, I put a screwdriver through the gable hole and into the roof tile to the little preset hole it has and just kind of use any of those four just use one of them to put a screwdriver through and then kind of push down on it so it acts as a pry bar if you will and it lifts that up just as you see there see that little preset hole I'm looking for just to bring that up I hold everything up I'm standing on the ladder bring that up so it's lined up with that hole now as I'm holding it where it has to go great trick here I put the screw in one any of the other holes is fine just to hold it zip once I got one screw holding it perfect as you can see that's where it needs to be of course uh, another person on the other side working together is a lot easier to line these up but this is how I do it myself when I'm by myself it's not always easy but you just sometimes have to wedge the flooring here or there around the back sides wherever the wall is kind of going up or down but a flat surface really comes into play here when you're lining everything up at the end. The flatter surface you have underneath any shed, the better the shed comes out every time. So here I'm showing you how I pull down on this to get it to the screw to suck down the roof tile to the truss. That's a little bit too far away. So I just use this screw as a little, a little bit, a turn or two inside there to pull down right in that area as you see just to get the screw in there and then kind of push up a little bit on the truss it's okay if it comes up from the groove just enough to get the roof tile to suck down onto that and be careful if you use a claw hammer like that when you're pulling down you don't want that screw to pop out and hit you in the hand did that once <laughs> so here I got pliers it's a little bit safer at least a plier hitting you in the hand is better than that claw hammer and then boom nice get a good grip on that pulled it down and you can see how I use the tools to my advantage to get that roof tile to come down and then your corner looks a little tight here also needs some pulling down someone on the outside make things way easier this is showing you how I do it when I'm by myself and just have to I could just walk around to that side that it's not dropping in and just either a couple taps on top of the mallet or just grab it the whole outside of the roof on the outside of that wall there and just pull down real good give it a good pull down straight down and it should you can hear it click into place if you're on the outside but I'm on the inside by myself this day so just making it work from the inside only um, I might have went to the outside and tried to pull it down and it just kept popping up it didn't want to pull down into place so 
working it from the inside. As you see there, every time I get a screw lined up and insert a screw, uh, it holds that one piece into position where it has to be, and I can move on to the next screw next to it and put a screw in there. Makes it a little bit easier. And as you go along, screwing them down, when you get closer and closer to the last screw, it should be lining up a little bit better. You can see there, right through the ray of sunshine, that lights up where the little preset hole is and I can see where it needs to screw into. I just aim that direction, pull the roof top down and into that hole. Once it's going into the pre-drill hole, a couple of turns and it sucks it down where it has to be. So here, just as I was saying, I come around to the outside and just pull down on that roof right there. Exactly what I was just explaining. Boom, boom. Give it a couple of taps. You got it to where it's not popping up by itself. That's nice. That's going to help out tremendously, right where it wanted, right where I want it to be. Come back around. Great footage here, and you can see it's holding where I want. Now I still hold that little screw if I need to, just to keep it from popping up when I put the screw in. You don't want it to pop up. So looks like the screw went in nice, and then it still shows here, right where I pointed there. It's about a quarter of an inch or so off from drop the nib from dropping into that little groove. So as you can see here, come up to the top, give it a couple taps with a mallet or a hammer in this case I had. Just don't go too crazy on it and mess up the end of it. Just give it a couple of nice taps down. They give you a block of wood. You can put that up there too and hit the wood block, which is instead of hitting the roof tile. And then boom, it drops down into the nib. Maybe a couple of more taps. Sometimes they're tight, probably because I put all those other screws in and it's holding it where it has to go nice and tight. So your last one is a little difficult to get down in there. But as you can see, moving right along, all the screws are tight and that nib is right in the little groove where it has to go. Just like the other side of it. Boom. The middle one, the end one. Roof pieces all lined up. And then I come back around take that screw out of there and utilize it right here and then fill up all your rest of the holes once it's all lined up and you can see all the pre-drill holes and then you just fill them up with those little screws all set and then after that you have to put these brackets across roof brackets tile brackets you just uh, put the rounded off edge into the gable it just makes it a little easier you can go either way but I've done so many that this is the easiest quickest way to get them to lock in and then here the rounded edge right there and then the other edge has a hole in it and it's more squared off and then once one side is in I take the other side right in between there push up on the roof panel just a little bit not too much you don't want those screws to pop out and just bend it in this scenario here is the gable gets the it's going the opposite direction you can see because you always stick the rounded edge into the gable side it just makes it easier and then a couple taps here, it's sliding into that groove, into that channel where it goes, boom, one, two, three. All support brackets on their roof are installed. They're pretty easy. Sometimes you might have to take a screw out and then put it back in to get the bracket in. But here, um, moving right along to the uh, roof spline, you have one, this piece here overlaps. This is going to be the last piece put on across the top in the middle you can see how it overlaps and this is the first piece you put on from the other end and you can see how it underlaps so the next roof uh, spline piece is going to overlap over this one so this being your first one to start it across the top of the roof here gets four screws and so you put them on just as you see here first one I usually put right on the, one of the outside ones to hold it and then I pull it and wrap it around and stretch it and bring it down so that the other end hole lines up which did nice on this one so now I have two outside screws in there holding it and then it gets two inside screws I'll probably put those on in a little bit just in case I have to adjust it I didn't want to put all four screws in the end yet and then here is a great shot of the roof spline what it looks like on top and I'm there underneath doing the next piece same fashion I usually put a screw here if it's lined up and it looks nice and perfect I put a screw in there to hold it looks great
so all the next few pieces of roof spline here are going to go on the same way one overlapping the previous one one overlapping the other all the way down this one looks like it's lining up pretty good and as you see there boom you just fill up all holes with screws all the way across to the front just as you see there and just continue the same process all the way across the front of the roof lining up the holes so your main roof spline is on and then you're switching drill bit tips to a number two Phillips tip to install the small skylights there's a great shot of all the little washers and screws that go to that all lined up preset pre ready to go so I could just grab a washer with the screw already in it and just drill them in where they go set your torque of course on your drill gun for low medium low I would say and then the uh, small skylights get inserted just as you see there there's a little uh, piece of plastic there that you can use to grab onto with your fingertips as you saw the first one and then the second one gets screwed on just like that boom boom I do all four and then I do uh, all four corners and then I do the one stint right down the middle and just continue this all the way across and then you're all finished after the skylights boom four on that one and continue across each skylight doing it just as you see here I do all four corners and then I do the two that are right in the middle last and then there's your middle one and your back one on your back wall close all right a couple more of these they all have the same screws and washers each one gets six total and you just line that screw up with the little hole there as you see here in the middle one line it up I use a long drill bit makes it easier all right mission complete on this little eight by seven and a half lifetime storage shed looks great from the outside open the door and inside nice flush everything's flush looks the way it's supposed to beautiful eight by seven shed thanks for watching guys rubber toe out